Hello everybody, I uh, hope you're all well, and uh, if I look like I've not slept, it's because I, I haven't really. I got back really late last night from uh, a trip that forms the basis of the next video, but today I want to talk about Antarctica again and show you some of my images that I got in Antarctica. Now, initially, I wanted this to be like a normal uh, vlog type video, uh, you know, where I talk about, oh, there's a penguin over there, and oh, now I'm going for lunch, and just like a linear vlog. The problem is though, on workshops particularly, uh, they are the priority. The workshop is what I'm there to do. And after that, the priority becomes my photos. And then in third place, the priority is the, the video. And so while I got lots of footage from the trip, I didn't necessarily get enough stuff to kind of tie a vlog together. So what I thought I'd do today is run through uh, kind of what we did, uh, where we went, the kind of photos that I got, together with lots of footage and the pictures that I got, yeah, and hopefully that makes a, an interesting video. Uh, also, today's video is sponsored very kindly by mpb.com, which is a fantastic place to buy used camera gear and to sell camera gear too. And uh, they very kindly lent me a 200 to 600 mil lens from Sony, which I was very excited about using for uh, mostly wildlife photography. And in fact, it's it's here. It's, uh, waiting to go back, just uh, waiting for a knock on the door from the courier to come and pick it up, which is a bit sad. I'd love to keep it, but uh, I've got too many lenses. Uh, anyway, more on mpb.com later. Let's look at some photos, shall we? Now, getting to Antarctica, particularly at the moment, was a bit of a mission. Basically, I drove to London, uh, flew 15 hours to Santiago in Chile, uh, waited two days in Santiago, flew down to Punta Arenas, waited another night there, and then flew two hours to um, King George Island. And that is where we got on the, uh, the Greg Mortimer and started our voyage down to the Antarctic Peninsula. And our first stop en route to the Antarctic Peninsula was a place called Deception Island, which just sounds, well, it looks like it sounds actually incredible. And it's basically this donut shaped island, which someone has taken a bite out of. And because of that, I think it became a, a really big whaling station. I assume it worked quite well because it was kind of sheltered from the winds and stuff, being a, a donut shape with mountains surrounding the bay. But that is just conjecture, I, I don't know that for sure. Anyway, it turned out to be exactly my kind of place. Amazing scenery, but with man-made stuff on the land. The whaling station, basically. Now Deception Island is an active volcano and uh, it feels like a super wild end of the world type place. And like I was saying last week when I was talking about the audiobook that I was listening to, Endurance, I just looked at those buildings and thought, imagine being here a hundred years ago. It just really boggles the mind, I think. Uh, everything looked very orange there and I tried to accentuate that in my photos by removing lots of the blue tones. Uh, and I think that works quite well. Although sadly, we didn't really have much time there because, uh, well, despite the fact that, according to me at least, it was a whaling station because of the shelter from the winds, got very windy, which wasn't forecast, but the winds got up to 60 knots, or above 60 knots, I think. And so we had to get back to the ship on the Zodiacs quite sharpish. Then I did have some time to take some photos of seals on the way back to the Zodiacs, which I think looked quite cool, but uh, yeah, it was a bit of a dash back to the ship. Uh, one word on these shots, actually. One of the rules that I try to adhere to when I'm shooting wildlife particularly, or any subjects actually, is the rule of odds. And uh, I don't know where I first heard this, but basically I think photos work better when they have an odd number of subjects. So one or three or five and, I mean, you know what odd numbers are. And uh, yeah, these seal shots, I, I think, were, were case in point. Anyway, we got back to the ship and started sailing south and woke up the next day in the Melchior Islands. Now, the Melchior Islands was our first chance to kind of cruise around in Zodiacs as opposed to making a landing. And naively, I thought it was going to be my first opportunity to properly use the 200 to 600. Sadly, I learned quite quickly that using a 200 to 600 on a Zodiac on quite choppy water was quite difficult. A, to get sharp photos, and B, to just maintain a feeling of, of not being sick. Feel like you're on a trampoline when you're uh, looking through a viewfinder at 600 mil. So that didn't really work out, but some of the shots I did get at south of 200 millimeters 
I do quite like. I mean, check out this seal. <laughs> And look at the blues in this wall. Just incredible. Uh, but anyway, after the Melchior Islands, we embarked on a voyage that became one of my favorite parts of the trip. And that was mostly down to the conditions. So we were heading for the Numea Channel. And on our way, we encountered a big family of orcas, which uh, I struggled to get good photos of because I wanted to include the landscape in the background as well. So I wasn't zoomed straight into the orcas. And it was so hazy that getting decent detail in the background, as well as making the orca big enough in the frame to be able to see that it was an orca, that was a challenge. I mean, I got one or two half decent shots, but I didn't, I didn't absolutely nail anything, I don't think. So heading down the Numea channel, the conditions got gnarly. The wind really kicked up, there was lots of swell, there was so much mood and drama in the skies. And I spent the entire time, as all of us photographers did, out on the decks. Um, and a couple of things that caught my eye, number one, this iceberg, which just looked like it was glowing. It was so white compared to the background and the sea in the foreground that it just looked like the perfect subject. And the other opportunity that caught my eye was this chance at a panorama. So you might be able to see on the GoPro, but basically there was a really long band of mountains. And down below those, there were just cliffs of ice falling into the sea. And I used the opportunity to take a 360 megapixel shot of, um, well, those mountains. And the detail in this is just hilarious. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on and on, goes for a long time. And tell you the truth, I'd love to find somewhere in my house to uh, hang that up. But I think Emily probably thinks it's a bit cold as a scene. It's not particularly warm and homely. I love it though, maybe somewhere in here. Uh, anyway, to top off this epic afternoon, the, uh, the waves just got even more crazy and I got some of these shots, which for some reason just remind me of Shutter Island, the movie, DiCaprio. Yeah, that was just epic. And then after that, to be able to shelter in, uh, in the boat was really nice too. Definitely one of my favorite things, being able to be in epic conditions like that, brutal conditions, but then being just a few steps away from, uh, well, the indoors and, and a coffee machine. Uh, now luckily overnight the winds died down and we found a decent spot to anchor. And even more luckily than that, it was a decent spot, another decent spot for a pano. Now I tried this panorama at 50 mil and 70 mil. And to be honest, I like a combination of the two. I prefer the land at 70, it's kind of more imposing in the scene, but I prefer the water at 50 because it just looks more interesting. I mean, there's more of it. And so what I've done is combine the two in a composite and I've got the water that was taken at 50 mil and the land that was taken at 70. And I think that, that just works a little bit better. Uh, so we pulled up close to Port Lockroy and I remember looking at some mountains with the 200, 600 on and thinking, I wonder if anybody has ever scaled those mountains or ever walked on any of that land. I swear I was thinking this, only to see a little dot come into the landscape and it was a person that morning, at that exact moment, walking along. I couldn't believe it, it burst my bubble a little bit because I thought I was looking at some epic, untouched scenery, but it uh, turns out it had been very much touched. Still, that photo of the hike up was one of my favorite shots of the trip and uh, certainly one of my favorite shots on the 200-600. Uh, I think it was taken at about 350 millimeters. From the boat, handheld, I was just very careful. In fact, I say handheld, I might have stuck the tripod legs together to act as like a, a monopod. Maybe I did that, I can't remember. Uh, also, my bubble was further burst there because at Port Lockroy, there's a post office. So any feelings I had of, uh, well, isolation were further kind of dismissed. I mean, it is a very isolated place, but when there's a post office there and you see a landscape that you think no one's ever walked on, it turns out they have. Yeah, I didn't feel as much of an explorer that morning as I maybe thought I would have. I do quite like these penguins in front of this iceberg though. That, that looks quite cool, I think. And this fairly dramatic looking mountain, which uh, I've just taken down the luminance of the blue to make it look a bit more dramatic. Sadly, there's not a bloke walking across that ridge in the foreground, that, that would have been epic. Uh, next up was the Lemaire Channel, which was just, I mean, huge mountains just rising out of the sea. It just looked, I mean, I don't know how to describe it. Here's some footage. And 
I mean, it just looked cold. And I've tried to accentuate that in the photos that I've got by uh, just turning down the temperature of the images to uh, to make it feel even colder than it looked because uh, yeah, it, it felt brutally cold. Anyway, we were going through the La Mer Channel to get to Peterman Island, which is where the hut that I just fell in love with was. And I spent some time on Peterman Island with the 200 600, trying to get some photos of penguins. Uh, I got some shots of the distant glacier, but for the most part, my attention was on the red hut. And I shot it mostly at my favorite focal length, which is 50 millimeters, as I've said lots before on this channel. And that's a whole nother video really, but I just love that everything looks normal at 50 millimeters. And it means when you've got a really, really interesting subject, there's nothing else to distract from it because what you're seeing is what you would see if you were actually there. Pretty much, I mean, the human focal length that you see with your eyes is disputed because you've got two eyes. And uh, without going into the science, lots of people say that you don't really see the world at 50 mil or 43 mil, whatever it is. But uh, I think 50 mil looks, looks pretty normal. And for that reason, as I say, when you've got amazing subjects, it's what I love to use. Anyway, as if that day wasn't good enough, we went for a cruise around the huge icebergs at night, uh, just as the sun was setting. And uh, another minky whale came to show its face among the huge icebergs. So that was, I mean, what a day. Now I'm gonna keep saying this, but the next morning was even better. Basically we woke up to just incredible conditions, just mist all over the sea and the mountains. And as you'd expect, there was a humpback or two humpbacks playing in the water. And I got this shot. So tail in the air, mist over the middle of the mountain, incredible light on the top of the mountains. I mean, just my kind of photo, really. And then just before breakfast, we went past some icebergs and there was a single penguin on one of them. And that just completely made my day. And it was a good job to be honest because the next place we stopped, Coverville Island, I struggled with. You might remember from the last video, I was talking about how we shouldn't shy away from shooting in the middle of the day. And I was talking about how in a place like that, you really don't need to anyway because it's still so epic. That said, I really struggled at Coverville Island. Uh, right, well, new day, new location, and uh, I've been trying to get a shot of that penguin on the Penguin Highway over there, but he's been there about 45 minutes and refuses to move. So instead, plan B is to uh, try and make sense of this field of ice at 600 mil. Basically, I'm gonna try and just get individual icebergs. A bit neater, I think. And after a really epic early morning, Struggling there and also struggling in the next spot, Nico Harbour, was just something that I really had to take on the chin. I mean, some places, you'll know this probably, some places you go to are just the most incredible looking places, but it turns out you struggle as a photographer to make them seem photogenic. And yeah, Nico Harbour in those conditions particularly was like that. I just really struggled to work out how I was gonna show this place off in one photo. And tell you the truth, I don't think I managed it. So I went and drowned my photographic sorrows in the sea. <laughs> uh, next morning, Portal Point, uh, the conditions were completely different, overcast and snowing. And I got a couple of the kinds of shots that I always spring for, which are uh, man-made things in a huge, vast landscape, Zodiac in this case. But I also got the kind of shot that I don't usually go for. And it's kind of an abstract shot where the sky basically mirrors the snow in the foreground. And in the middle, there's basically just a face of ice with lots of detail, lots of blue. And uh, this turned out to be one of my favorite shots of the trip. I didn't really expect it to, but uh, yeah, as I say, not the kind of thing I usually shoot, but I'm drawn to this and uh, maybe I'll get this past Emily as a print somewhere in the house. Hmm, still quite cold looking though. Uh, that afternoon we went to Hydruga Rocks, which is an amazing place teeming with wildlife. And I spent my time trying to photograph a fur seal. And I quite like the results, really. Again, not my kind of image, typically. I'm not a wildlife photographer, but I thought this looked, looked pretty nice. And yes, it's the 200, 600, as you might expect. About 600 mil this. In fact, just shy of that, because uh, as I was saying in the last video, I try and step back a bit from uh, the focal length that I actually want, just to give myself some room for cropping. And then for our last morning in Antarctica was Paradise Harbour. So called because, uh, well, I mean, it's pretty fairly obvious, isn't it? It looks like paradise. Anyway, the shot I got here, as you might expect, included a hut. And it was probably my favorite shot of the entire trip. I mean, it has the mountains in the background, the hut, which I just love because I think it tells stories. 
and also a load of penguins. So yeah, anyway, thank you for listening to me waffle on about the photos that I took in Antarctica. It was an amazing trip. I imagine we'll go and do another workshop in future. So uh, keep your ears peeled for that if you're interested. And what an incredible place. Difficult to photograph at times. I mean, I went to Antarctica thinking it would just be a cheat location and that you'd be able to point your camera at basically anything and get a decent shot. It was harder than that, I would say, which worked well for a workshop because it's really nice to have a challenge, but uh, it was rewarding all the same. But yeah, phenomenal place and uh, can't wait to go back to the end of the world in many ways, which is true, actually. You see that map up there, map of the world? The Antarctic Peninsula doesn't really even make it onto the map. I mean, there's a bit of it just right at the bottom, but uh, the places that we went to, Peterman Island, places like that, they don't make it onto that map. Pretty cool to say you've been somewhere that doesn't even feature on a world map. So yeah, great trip. Uh, now once again, a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, mpb.com. So mpb.com helps hundreds of thousands of customers with hundreds of thousands of pieces of gear every single year. And basically, it is the first place I check if I want to buy some new camera gear because you can get fantastic deals on used kit and every piece of gear that you buy comes with a six month warranty. Also, if you're looking to sell some of your camera gear, maybe you've not used it for a long period of time, mpb.com makes it super simple to do so. Basically, you just list what you've got on the MPB website, they will give you a quote, and if you're happy with that quote, they will arrange collection from your address. And then once they've got the items, they've had a chance to check them, they make your payment really quickly. It's a fantastic service. I've used it lots for both buying and selling, and I couldn't recommend it enough. Uh, there are links in the description to mpb.com, and uh, I shall be using them again if I decide to uh, get one of my own 200s, 600s, which I might do, I was mega impressed with it. Difficult from the Zodiacs, but outside of that, thumbs up. Uh, so yeah, a big thank you for watching, and next week I'll be in a very different location. So uh, stay tuned for that. I'll see you then. Cheers.